Steelcase announcing permanent layoffs here in the U.S. and overseas. Susan Shaw talked to our partners at Crane's Grand Rapids business about the cuts and what they could mean for the Grand Rapids-based manufacturer. Joining me now is Andy Velaskovic, managing editor of Crane's Grand Rapids business. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Of course. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us a little bit more about the steel case layoffs. Where are they happening and when? So they're happening in several markets, uh, both in the U.S. and overseas. Uh, Steelcase is closing a distribution center down in uh, the Atlanta area in Georgia. Uh, will result in about 30 job losses. Uh, but uh, most of them are coming in their overseas markets uh, in the Asia-Pacific uh, area, as well as France. Um, in total, uh, around 350 or so, 300 uh, layoffs total. Okay, so what is the reasoning behind these layoffs? Is this a surprise? You know, it really isn't a surprise. Uh, it, just in terms of what the office furniture uh, industry has been dealing with these past few years, um, you know, things like uncertainty, disruption come to mind, of course, uh, with sort of the, 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 the shift to work from home. So, you know, furniture companies like Steelcase have have kind of t been taking a multi-pronged approach to deal with this. Um, and it's not just uh, sort of the pandemic trends either. There's you know the macroeconomic issues going on with inflation and supply chain disruptions. So, uh, you know, increase, in increasing their prices is one strategy. And of course, cutting costs is another strategy. Uh, they've been very, you know, kind of outspoken about at, at least, um, you know, for these publicly traded companies. Um, and, and talking with analysts. And so, you know, this is really just a cost, a cost cutting move um, to, to help with their balance sheets. Mm -hmm. So a couple of factors involved in this. So what does cutting these jobs do for the company in terms of savings? Is it quite a bit? Sure, so yeah, uh, you know, on an annual basis going forward, it's it's somewhere in the 10 to $15 million uh, dollar ballpark and, and those are annualized uh, cost savings. Um, you know, I, I will note too, uh, uh, Steelcase, which just wrapped up its, its 2023 fiscal year, uh, actually improved uh, its bottom line compared to, to 2022. So um, they're remaining profitable, but uh, you know, this is, this is part of the cost cutting strategy. Mm -hmm. So what do these layoffs mean, I guess, strategy wise for the company moving forward? Is this going to solve their problems or are they going to have to reassess after all of this? So, yeah, I, you know, I would characterize this as sort of a, a near-term uh, solution. Longer term, I, you know, companies like Steelcase are looking to invest in markets um, that make sense for them and, and find some opportunities. And, and right now, they, they do uh, see some opportunities. Uh, you know, it's not all bad news. They see some opportunities with... Uh, sort of the hybrid work environment uh, that we're that we're kind of in now. Uh, we're we're seeing companies, uh, you know, largely have more give employees more flexibility. Um, but at the same time, these these companies are also investing in their workplaces to to make them more amenable uh, to what their employees want. So um, they are seeing some interest, uh, particularly from large corporate customers, and in, in some new sort of office furniture layouts and, and setups that uh, that are kind of part of this uh, new normal when we think about an office environment. Yeah, the process of evolving, I guess. Andy right. Velaskovitz, thank you so much for joining us.